You know it's funny how spoiled you get when the weather turns nice. We broke some records that are about 100 years old last week with some highs in the mid-20s and ooh, it was very, very nice. It's 10 degrees Celsius today and I'm cold. I'm wearing a sweater. Anyways, um, let's sit down and talk about something that I found this week while I was playing around with my camera and uh, that I'm really excited about. In the intro of today's vlog, I showed off a new lens that my brother has uh, sent me all the way from Australia and it's a macro lens and I've been having a lot of fun with it as things are growing and, and, and coming out for the spring and the, the leaves are starting to come out of the buds. And I, I was kind of plunking around my garden like I do every couple of days and I noticed something. I noticed that these grapes are budding. Last week we spoke about these vines and the fact that they take quite a while to, to get established kind of three plus years and that got me thinking this year I said okay well I've had these for three years I'd really like them to start to produce for me but not just because I want some grapes because these two grapes right here are very very special to me they this one on the right is my grandpa Laguerre heirloom grape and on the left is my grandpa Lampy heirloom grape in 2013 they both sent uh, grapes that they grow in northwestern Ontario and I was super excited to get some because you know I like stories and I like plants that not only produce but have meaning for me and these ones are especially important to me so to see that they're not they weren't winter killed all the way back to the ground again and they may actually be uh, growing and budding out means that a they might produce but it be, more importantly means that I might be able to propagate them and they're doing well enough in my garden that they're happy. So that brings me to today's project. Today's project has to do with the grapes. Hold on, it's afternoon so I gotta drink tea now but I'm a little cold so need something warm. So these beds in the back for those of you who, who have been following me, have been uh, under construction for a number of years and I kind of built them out of whatever scrap lumber that I had around. I originally built this one and then I built this one and then I built this one. And so they look a little ragtag. Um, and I was happy with that for a while until these grapes started to really do well. Um, having them disconnected means their root systems um, really can't grow to their fullest potential. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to carefully deconstruct this bed, these beds, and attach them all. Um, so let's go to the hardware store, get the supplies, and get this project done. Okay, so here's the plan. I'm gonna remove the old beds and then I'm gonna straighten out the line with the new lumber and disturb the soil as little as possible so that I don't uh, harm these perennials. So I kind of figured this would happen. These are not treated and I was able to just literally pull the boards apart. These posts had rotted through and so had most of the boards and that's fine. I chose to do pine again this time because my other perimeter bed is pine and eventually I'm gonna to have to replace that so I might as well replace both of them at the same time which would allow me to make a, you know, if I'm gonna invest in something a little more rigid, I want some time to think about it instead of just this quick fix this year. So I'm gonna rebuild this now. So the perennials that I moved, including this apple tree, are doing fantastically well. In fact, take a look at this. You can see here, 
that uh, they're budding out, which means to me that they've probably survived. I finished up my project for today. Take a look. Nice. It's nice to have that finished and tidied up. A lot of you from the Edmonton area or Alberta have asked if I was willing to go to coffee. I can do one better yet. I'm really excited to announce today the launch of my new website. So go over and check it out, albertaurbangarden.ca, and make sure to register for the mailing list. There's an opportunity there that you can click on to come to a perennial class that I'll be teaching at the end of May at Greenland Garden Center. They've been kind enough to allow me to uh, host the session there and give you a coupon for 10% off any perennial of your choice. So make sure to hop on over there and register. There are limited spaces, so you'll want to make sure you register quickly. And we'll see you at the end of May. Enough monkeying around here with my rebuilt raised bed. It's time to go get my son. It has been really miserable today. I had a hard time getting the camera out um, into the garden because it kept hailing and raining, but this we desperately need. Alberta is in a, has fire bans in Alberta for the first time in quite a while, and those firefighters really could use the help uh, that the rain is bringing this weekend. Over the last few weeks, I've gone over a couple of videos where I really went into quite a bit of depth on perennials, including these, uh, these perennial figs behind me. I was wondering what your favorite perennial is. Mine right now, it's really hard to say, but it's probably apples. And that's mostly to do with the fact that I have a 149 year old uh, cider mill. And that is just such a fantastic heirloom that my parents were able to bring back for me. And I really enjoy growing the apples, eating the apples fresh, and then making cider with the surplus. Anyways, let me know it, what your favorite perennial is, if you can pick one, in the comment section below. And you have yourself a great day.